Welcome back to another fast group video. This go around, we're gonna talk about main shaft thrust clearance on a B-series transmission. It's an often overlooked process. You don't hear about it too much, uh, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So let's get to it. Main shaft thrust. Let's go over some of the hows, whens, and whys you need to do this. So let's go over how to set up the main shaft so you can start the whole process. Right here I have the main shaft stacked up. I'm gonna start from the very bottom. Make sure you buy some new bearings. Press those in, and then here we go. Install your cone washer. This is a uh, cone washer with the concave facing up, flat washer. Main shaft, third, fourth gear hub has to be pressed in. Spacer, fifth gear reverse hub, pressed in as well, spacer and new bearing as well. Make sure you get that one you too. So that's how you set it up. You don't install any other gears or anything like that. Um, this is what the manual calls for and that's what Honda says, so we're gonna do that. Next, your shim. Now, you can go off of the shim that you currently have and then just work from there or you can also go through the other steps that Honda recommends. I'll show some pictures throughout the video on how to go about that, but I'm just gonna cover uh, this portion of it. And if you do need other shims, make sure you buy some. I have several of the shims here, and have yourself one of these, because if you don't, it's damn near impossible to take that out. Now, um, when, well, whenever you change out bearings, main shaft, you're gonna wanna do this. There are those variances that are just, you know, they're gonna be different, and that little bit of a difference might break your transmission. So that's when you're gonna wanna do it. And here is why I have to do mine. I purchased the GSR gear set off of a friend, which was a good, which is a good gear set. Um, like a fool though, I just installed it and I didn't have the proper tools to measure for the main shaft thrust. And these are the tools here, which I'm gonna go over in a bit. So I didn't have these and I just threw it in there and when this spacer can't just slide in and it has to be pressed up, well, that's a problem. And you can see how discolored it is versus that one that's in good condition. So that's why I had to do mine. So let's hope this doesn't happen to you. Now with everything in place, you have your main shaft stacked up shim ready to go. Now you can close the transmission up. No Honda bond, not yet. That's not until later when you are finished putting everything together and you are comfortable with the readings that you got. So we're gonna close this up. Again, no Honda bond, and we're gonna do every other bolt at 20 foot pounds. So just install every other bolt, 20 foot pounds, and then we'll start setting everything up. With the two halves now intact, make sure you go around and you tap all around the transmission. Tap the top a few times to make sure everything is good and tight and everything's making contact. Remember, no Honda Bond, not yet. And then after that, you can go ahead and install every other bolt. You don't have to do every one, every other one is good. And then just torque these puppies down to 20 foot pounds and you should be good. Now we can flip it around. With the trans flipped over, let's talk about some of the tools you need and how to set them up. So first of all, you are gonna need a main shaft holder. These are available through Honda. I, however, made my own. Bolt to bottom out and push against uh, the bottom and lift up the main shaft. So you're gonna need something that isn't easily gouged, like steel. Dial indicator. Make sure when you set everything up that it's zeroed out. It does have to make contact though, but it has to be at zero. Holder for your dial indicator and uh, bottom base. So just attach it with the bolt to the transmission. It'll hold it just fine. Okay, so those are the tools that you need and how to set them up. Quick organization tip, baking sheets. Use them. They're not just for baking anymore. They are for holding counter shafts, main shaft gears and bearings, LSDs, reverse idle gears, change holders, 
shift forks, bearings, and other miscellaneous transmission stuff. Oh, also don't forget your magnetic trays for bolts, maybe some baggies, but there you go. Baking sheets. If you don't have any, go get yourself some. They're not too expensive. If you do have some at home, grab them, but replace them. Otherwise, you'll have really pissed off people and no cookies. So the service manual calls for four to seven thousandths um, of thrust. And right now I'm at zero. I know that I have to change this one because it's too loose at uh, nine thousandths. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do this and then I'm gonna work backwards from there. I did purchase two other shims and one is a 1.53, the other one's a 1.56. What I currently have in there right now is a 1.5. So you're gonna see that it's gonna move up. I believe it's nine thousandths, okay? So, oh, it also says, don't turn more than 60 degrees after it stops moving or else you can damage the transmission. So let's see what we can get. Okay, so right there it did stop moving. And I'm trying not to turn it too much more. Okay, so right there, that's at nine thousandths. And it's a bit too loose. Okay, so I'm gonna change it over to the new shim. I just changed out the other shim and this is where I landed. The one that I changed out for was the 1.53 and you can see that it's just shy of seven thousandths. Um, so that's not within the range. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it over to the 1.56 and see where I fall. I'm hoping I fall within the, within the six thousandths, right there. But we'll see. And again. All right. This is where I landed after changing over to the 1.56 shim, just a tad bit over 5 thousandths, which is within the specified range that Honda recommends, which is four to seven. The one I had before was a bit over 7 thousandths, and then the 1.5 shim that I had was about nine. So I'm gonna call this a success, and I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so there you have it. Main shot thrust clearance, how, when, and why so you won't make the same mistake I did. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd consider subscribing. I mean, I would, but I'm the one making the videos. So until next time.